Just a few quick reminders before we begin. Good afternoon and welcome to St. Matthias Church for the celebration of the Sacrament of Confirmation. Sponsors, during the Rite of Confirmation, you are reminded to state the confirmation name of the candidate clearly to the bishop. At this time, please silence all your cell phones. And during today's liturgy, there is no flash photography. During the Rite of Confirmation, you are asked to please not leave your pew to take pictures or disrupt the Rite in any way. At the time of Holy Communion, please be mindful of the pipes which run through the pews, and there is a step down out of the pews. We're very happy to welcome all of you, the parents, guardians, sponsors, friends, and family of our Confirmandi. You are most welcome here at St. Matthias Parish. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, Come Holy Ghost. Come with thy grace and 
and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God you shall be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord of my soul. O oh Lord my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O oh Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the If you take away their breath, they perish, 
and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time came for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one of them heard them speaking in his own language. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed to them, You who are the Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God, with mighty deeds wonders and signs which God worked through him in your midst and you yourselves know this man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God you killed using lawless men to crucify him God raised this Jesus as we are all witnesses exalted at the right hand of God he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured it forth as you both see and hear the word of the Lord thanks be to God to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Come, Holy Spirit, From the Holy Gospel, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus. 
Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Candidates, please stand. Your Excellency Bishop Fitzgerald, our parish community warmly welcomes you to St. Matthias Church and is honored by the presence of a successor of the Apostles. I present to you our sons and daughters who are candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation. Under the guidance of their parents, guardians, and sponsors, and catechists, with, prayer, with the prayerful support and encouragement of this parish community, they have prepared for this sacrament of Christian initiation, which was begun at their baptism. I ask that you impose hands upon them and anoint them with the sacred chrism, sealing them with the gift of the Holy Spirit. We pray that their participation in the Holy Eucharist with all of us assembled here will strengthen them as faithful witnesses of Christ. Please be seated, boys and girls. You know, you have a, a very beautiful church here. I can't help stop looking at uh, the beautiful stained glass windows in this church. And we're lucky because it's the right time of day. The sun is coming our way, and we can really appreciate the beauty of this church. You look very nice. I see a full church full of people here to pray for you, to pray with you as you prepare to receive the Holy Spirit. So just relax, and we'll pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Boys and girls, I think the second reading that we heard today from our scriptures, from the Acts of the Apostles, really fits in well with the sacrament that you're about to receive. You know, next week in the church is one of the most important weeks in our church year. We call it Holy Week. On Sunday, we'll have the Mass of Palm Sunday. Everybody comes to church. They take a blessed palm home with them. We remember Jesus entered into Jerusalem to begin the journey that led to his suffering, his passion, and his death. On Thursday of next week, Holy Thursday, you have a beautiful stained glass window here. I don't think all of you can see it, but it shows an image, beautiful image of the Last Supper. On that night, Jesus took bread. He said, this is my body. He took the wine. He said, this is my blood. Really, it was the beginning of the Mass that the Church has celebrated for over 2,000 years now, the Mass that we're celebrating right now. We believe that every time the priest says those words over the bread and wine, the real and the living presence of Jesus is in our midst. Then on Friday, we celebrate that great mystery of love, Jesus on the cross. God so loved the world that he sent his only son into this world to save us and make it possible for us to come to his kingdom. 
And then next Sunday, the greatest mystery and the greatest feast of our Catholic Church, the resurrection of Jesus, that great mystery that he overcame evil, he overcame sin, even death itself. And the beauty of it is that we remember, especially at Easter time, and we'll remember it today when you renew the promises of your baptism, that Jesus promised that those who believe in him, who follow him, will also come to new life now and for eternity. That's the promise that was given to us in baptism. And so going back to our second reading, we have a dramatic story. Jesus' first followers, we're told, were all together in a locked room. They were discouraged. Jesus had suffered. He died. He even appeared to some of them, and yet they still had doubts. In another part of the gospel, Jesus said to all of them, and he says it to us when we hear it, I won't leave you alone in the world. I won't leave you orphans. I will send you an advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will be with you all days, even until the end of time. We see from that reading the difference the Holy Spirit made in the lives of Jesus' first followers. They were no longer discouraged. They were no longer fearful. They went out and they began to teach others about Jesus, that God sent his son into this world to save us and to be with us in the ups and downs of our life and even to give us the gift of eternal life. So we have a sense that the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes, he comes to strengthen us, to empower us, to give us a sense of God's love and his mission for us in this life. And so today we know that you're going to receive the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of confirmation. I think you probably studied that uh, we say we have three sacraments in our church. We have seven sacraments. But three of those sacraments we call sacraments of initiation in our Catholic Church. Can anybody tell me what one of those sacraments would be? Yes. Um, Very good. And what's your name? I'm Ryan. Ryan, thank you, Ryan. Ryan tells me one of those sacraments is the sacrament of baptism, that first sacrament that we receive in our Catholic Church, sometimes called the necessary sacrament. Because unless we receive that sacrament, we can't receive any of the other sacraments. It's a gateway to the rest of the sacraments. But in that sacrament, and we really think of this at Easter time, the church teaches us that we become a child of God and an heir of heaven. The church teaches us through that sacrament who we are before God. We're his child, and he wants us to come to his kingdom. And so for the first time, he gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit to begin to help us on our journey of faith toward his kingdom. And I say the gift of the Holy Spirit because in a couple of minutes when you come forward, I'm going to anoint each of you on the forehead with the holy oil, with the sign of the cross. And I will say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Every time the Holy Spirit comes to us, and he comes to us in each of the sacraments, especially in the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, it's a gift the gift of God's love. God's love comes to us in the sacrament, and right after I anoint you and say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, I'll say to each of you, peace be with you. Every time the Holy Spirit comes, he comes to restore God's peace, God's joy, God's love in our hearts. Can't get a better gift than that. So we have sacrament of baptism. Can anybody tell me another sacrament of initiation? Confirmation, right? And what's your name? Laura. Laura, very good. Okay, and you're going to receive that sacrament short, shortly. Laura, if you've already received the Holy Spirit first time in the sacrament of baptism, any thoughts about why you receive the Holy Spirit a second time today? To very good. To complete, that's very good, to complete your baptism. Because in baptism, we start our journey of faith but as we get older, and we who are older know this well, that to follow Jesus is hard work. His message is challenging. And we soon discover that despite our best intentions, we can't do it all by ourselves. We need the grace of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to keep us, 
from becoming discouraged and to persevere in our faith. You know, Jesus didn't say that we have to get everything right all in one step or all at one time. He tells us, if you have faith in me and follow me, you will come to my kingdom. Sometimes along the way, we take detours. We have weaknesses, we have faults, we commit sins. But Jesus gives us, the church gives us the gift of the sacraments to get us back on our course. And so we see how important the gift of the Holy Spirit is. So we have baptism, we have confirmation. Who can tell me the third sacrament of Christian initiation? Very good. And what's your name? Zachary? Zachary? Thank you, Zachary. Zachary tells me that the third sacrament is Holy Communion, the Holy Eucharist, the Mass, the sacrament that we're all celebrating together right now, and that sacrament that reminds us that the Lord is with us. Jesus refers to the Eucharist in the Gospel of John as the bread of life, the bread of life for this world to strengthen us in our journey of faith, but even the bread of life that leads us to that gift of eternal life. He says this about the, the, the Eucharist in the Gospel of John. He or she who eats this bread in faith will live forever. That promise that he gives us of eternal life for those who persevere in their faith and follow him. You know, boys and girls, <clears throat> between our readings today, we sang together, Lord, send out your spirit <clears throat> and renew the face of the earth. Every time the Lord sends the spirit, he has a mission. And that's going to be something different for each one of us in this world. Did you ever think that God has something special, something unique, something different that he wants each of you to do with your lives in this world? It's true. It's true for all of us. And for the rest of our lives, hopefully we'll pray to the Holy Spirit to keep on making good decisions. What does the Lord want me to do now? Where is he leading me next? It's going to be something different for each of you. But one thing I think the Holy Spirit tries to do for all of us, and we're taught this in the Sacrament of Confirmation, is to become a witness to Jesus in this world. That's what happened to Jesus' first followers in the reading that we heard from the Acts of the Apostles. They became witnesses to Jesus in this world. And what does a witness do? A witness is someone who brings more love, more joy, more hope, more forgiveness, more compassion, more peace, more joy into a world that's sometimes dark and violent. Jesus was a light in the world. He wants us to share that light with others by the way we live our faith, certainly, but also by the way we interact with others. So I say to each of you today, open up your hearts, open up your minds, Open up your lives to the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord loves each of you very much. He has something special he wants you to do with your life in this world, and he wants you to do it well. If you pray to the Holy Spirit, and if you use the talents the Lord has given you, you will help to make this world a better place, and you'll come, more importantly, to the kingdom of heaven. I'll ask just those who are to be confirmed to please stand now for the renewal of the promises of your baptism. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins? the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 
Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord.
My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God the Almighty Father and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which are, proceed from the Holy Spirit, are one. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For these his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and all the bishops, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have one Maker and Father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters, without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts, seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those in our families who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, may they experience the peace of Jesus Christ in their difficulties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those in our families who have died, may they experience the joy of eternal rest with Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, By the Waking of Our Hearts. And bring us 
us together in Christ in our labor as most sweet grateful coolness in the heat console our restless lives by your comfort we seek by the waking of our hearts by the stirring of our souls may the spirit of God abide and bring us together in Christ. Bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen warm the chill. Come guide our searching minds toward your promise fulfilled. By the waking of our hearts, by the stirring of our souls, may the Spirit of God abide and bring us together in Christ. Grant us virtue, sure reward. May your gracious love be sent. Come with your peace and joy that shall never end. By the waking of our hearts, by the stirring of our souls, the Spirit of God abide and bring us together in Christ. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him, as they share in the memorial of his redemption by which you gain for us your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. <laughs> Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna.
is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Spread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Matthias, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Please to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also, Lord, your servants reborn in baptism, who you have been pleased to confirm by bestowing the Holy Spirit, and in your mercy keep them safe in your grace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord 
through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. joins us together let us rejoice in him and in our love and care for all now love God in return In true communion let us gather, may all division cease, and in their place be Christ the Lord, our risen Prince of
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Just a few words of gratitude first to you, uh, Bishop Fitzgerald. Thank you for joining us this afternoon at St. Matthias Parish and bringing the Holy Spirit and sealing these fine young members of our parish community with the Holy Spirit and confirming them today. Your presence is an honor uh, to us. Also a word of thank thankfulness and gratitude to the parents of our candidates, your guardians, and your sponsors, for it is through you uh, and the good witness of your, those you selected as your sponsor that these fine young uh, boys and girls come to know their Catholic faith. For no matter what we do, the church will always and says that you are the first teachers of the ways of faith to these fine young people. So thank you for witnessing to them and guiding them and being an influential individual in their lives. I'm grateful to everyone who uh, made this liturgy so beautiful, to our lectors, our altar servers, our music ministers. Um, I'm grateful for the time and the effort that, that is put into making the liturgy so beautiful. And I'm also grateful to our uh, fine director of religious education, Mrs. Peggy Healy. I don't know where she is. And also, uh, there she is. And to uh, Miss Eileen uh, Keenan, who is the catechist for our uh, seventh and eighth graders in the confirmation class. So to all of you, uh, most grateful heart that I have today, it's a very beautiful thing to see these young people fully initiated into the life of their Catholic faith and where the Holy Spirit will now lead them and guide them, we pray for you. So thank you all. We want to also thank your pastor, Father Keen, for his uh, leadership uh, in the parish and for the many things he does uh, in the archdiocese. He's a very generous priest. We also have a former pastor uh, with us today, uh, Father Bransfield, also a very generous priest who does many, many things for the archdiocese, for which we're very grateful. Grateful for the services of your deacon in the parish here and the deacon who came with us today to be our MC. Uh, to give of his time and generosity. So all of us together, I think we all have our contribution to make to the gifts of the church. I, in a particular way, I just want to add that uh, I also thank everyone that Father Keen mentioned, but I want to particularly thank our young people today. The way you participated in the liturgy today, the way you responded to the questions, you did a great job. I think we should all recognize the good job they did. The Lord be with you. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made, his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, Go Make of All Disciples. Go make of all disciples, we hear the call of Lord that comes from Oh, this. 
disciples, baptizing in the name of Father, Son, and Spirit, from age to age the same. We call each new disciple to follow you. soul and body by water and the word. Go make of all disciples we at your feet would stay until each life's vocation shows forth your holy way. We call to God plants 